So today um, we're doing Kevin's trailer, which is uh, part two of Kevin's trailer. And all we wanted to get accomplished today was to get the main part of the frame uh, put together, get the suspension stuff on, and get the axle on, get the tires on. That way we can we can move it around. Once you weld the frame together, it's super super heavy and it's it's a pain in the butt to deal with you don't want to be flipping it and trying to manhandle it around you want it sitting on a set of tires um, his frame is two inch by two inch tubing with a three sixteenths wall that's where we changed mine when we built mine uh, I used quarter inch wall it was way way too heavy duty you, I, you did you don't need it there were there were times yesterday when we were uh, putting putting his together that uh, I was starting to think that even 3 sixteenths for his was too thick but it's it's plenty strong enough uh, his his tongue is quarter inch wall two and a half by two and a half just like mine He's going to use a different kind of hitch. He's going to use one of those fancy uh, lock and roll or whatever hitches. I'm, I'm not about spending that kind of money on a hitch. Uh, his trailer is six inches longer than mine. Uh, mine is four foot by 84 inches. And his ended up being four foot by 90 inches. And the reason he's doing that is the back of his trailer I have a horizontal swing tailgate and he wants to do a vertical swing tailgate and make kind of the the back of it kind of like one of those teardrop how they open up I don't think it's going to be the kitchen so to speak but it's it's going to be uh, well it's going to be cool I know that um, Anyway, he wants that back hatch to open vertically, so we're, we have to have a little bit of a slope on the back, and that's we just added six inches to the whole thing just to just to make that happen. Uh, what you're seeing today uh, and all the time lapse stuff is uh, simply just cutting the steel, making sure it's square. Uh, getting it tacked into place and then doing final welding now granted I still haven't final welded the top side of all the welds from uh, yesterday doing all this um, I'll, I'll go out there in the next day or so and final weld everything on top we just did everything that was going to be on the bottom that I don't want to weld overhead later uh, so that being said, um, what was a pain in the butt yesterday? Well, my uh, my Dewalt chop saw was being a was being a booger yesterday. Um, it it just that that thick tubing, man. Them, that saw I I don't know. You guys' saws maybe better than mine. I don't know. I've had that Dewalt for 15 years and uh it just it does not like that thick tubing so that's what took the longest was cutting us 45s and le let me explain right there the outside perimeter on that frame of the two inch tubing i cut 45s on all the corners just to give you a little bit more to weld to and so it's more seamless um, the the point to point measurements are 48 and 48 for the short one and then 90 and 90 for the long ones and you put that together you got 48 by 90 um, the cross members that we put uh, they ended up being just a fuzz over 44 um, and there was there's four of those we're going to add another uh, we're going to add a couple uh, triangle cross members to the tongue later but we just ran out of that two inch steel uh, anyway we got we weld that frame together and Kevin happened to have these corner uh, corner clamps that made it really handy just 
it was really cool i i don't i don't have any of those when i did mine i just had to use a square and a lot of cussing so kevin had them clamps clamp it all together and then you can tack it all together and let it cool off for a minute and it's it's square and i don't know if it's going to show it in the time lapse or not but you know we we're checking square a hundred times make a bunch of welds and check square again and uh did the same thing when we when we added that tongue the steel for the tongue on there uh, i checked from the tip the very front tip of that steel to to the back corners and we got it within an eighth of an inch which is how mine ended up when i did mine one thing i forgot to talk about was uh on kevin's trailer that we were working on yesterday we we're doing a 40 percent 60 percent for the axle placement his trailer is 90 inches long so that means that the nine nine inches is 10 percent of that you multiply that times four that's 36 inches so we put the axle centered 36 inches from the back of the trailer so that just that that's what worked on my trailer and it's it's what i know so that's what i stick with so and don't forget if you if you like the video if you like what we're doing with the trailer build make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the little bell notification and uh, it'll let you know every time we put a new video up and every time we work on the trailer we're going to put a new video up so there you go thanks for watching